thanks for watching and today I want to present a really cool application of linear algebra because linear algebra helps us solve problems that were previously super hard if not impossible to solve. In particular, it's not very hard to find a formula for the reflection about the x-axis or the y-axis or even y equals x. But now we want to do something much harder. Let's find a reflection about y equals 2x. And you could try this out. If you find a formula without linear algebra, I'd be pretty impressed. Because um, the formula is not obvious to guess. But then you'll see in the end, well, it, does, well, it is what it is. It be like that. No, it do be like that sometimes. So let t go from r2 to r2, be reflection. But this time about y equals 2x. And at the end, I'll tell you how to do it with y equals 3x or mx in general. And you'll see it's basically the same thing. So let t be reflection about this axis, and let's find a formula for t. Let me draw a picture of what, what's going on. Again, we have our x and y axes, and we have that line y equals 2x, which looks something like that. And what does t do? It takes a vector x, y here, and just reflects it about this line to get, let's say, a t of x comma y. All right. Now, you know, in, in linear algebra, usually to find t, it's enough to find t of 1, 0, and t of 0, 1. But here it's actually super hard to find. And in fact, not quite obvious. But the point is, we actually know two other points that are pretty obvious to figure out what t does. First of all, suppose you have a point on this axis, on this line. Let's say the point 1, comma 2 then we know what t does to that point. If it reflects this point about this line, it just stays the same. So we know that t of 1, 2 is t is 1, 2. That's one thing. And by the way, of course, we also know t of 2, 4 is 2, 4. But that's not very helpful because at the end, we want a basis. So somehow, we need to find another obvious point where we know what t does. Well, the nice thing about reflection is that it behaves very nicely with perpendicularity. So for example, you can consider this perpendicular line. Okay. And if you want, you don't even need to know the equation, but I guess from calculus, you know that, uh, or algebra, you know that the perpendicular line has equation negative reciprocal slope, negative one-half x. In particular, let's pick a point on that line, let's say uh, minus, I'm well, sorry, uh, just to check, minus two comma one. Then we kind of know what t does here. In this case, reflection, you just flip it about the origin. So the point minus two comma one becomes two comma negative one. In other words, minus that point. So t of minus 2 comma 1, it's minus minus 2 comma 1, which is 2 comma negative 1. Which kind of tells us the following. It might be useful to consider the basis con uh, consisting of the points 1 comma 2 and minus 2 comma 1. So in other words, suppose your new x-axis is this thing, and your new y-axis is this line. Then it turns out from those two formulas, we can easily figure out what t is in that basis. So let, maybe in a new whiteboard. 
By the way, in another video, I will do the same thing with projection, also pretty cool. So let beta be 1, 2, and minus 2, comma, 1. And first of all, let's find a matrix of T with respect to that basis. And again, it's a basis because those vectors are linearly independent, so they're not multiples of each other. That's why I made sure to choose a new vector here, and it turns out they span your whole space, which is good. So how do you find a matrix of a linear transformation? You evaluate T at the old vectors, so T of 1, 2, and T of minus 2, comma, 1. We've just shown that T of 1, 2 is 1, 2 and t of 2 minus 2, 1 is 2 comma minus 1. And then you just need to write this in terms of your basis vectors. That's blah, 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 minus 2 comma 1. So it's 1 times 1, 2 plus 0 times minus 2 comma 1. And this is minus 1 times, sorry, this is 0 times 1, 2 plus minus 1 comma minus 2, 1. And therefore, all you need to do is gather those coefficients in columns, t beta beta. And again, very important that it goes in columns. So it's 1, 0 as a column, and 0, minus 1 as a column. So this is the matrix of t, and it is a reflection matrix, and that shouldn't be too hard to imagine why, because you see, on this axis, T just fixes a vector. It doesn't do anything. So it's 1, 0. On this axis, it reflects that vector. So it's 0, minus 1, just like reflection. But that's not what we want. We actually want a concrete formula for T. And that's why, in a second, you'll see it's useful just to consider the standard basis. So suppose we change our axes back. So suppose our new axes here are the x and y axis. So let gamma equals 1, 0, and 0, 1. Just be the standard basis of R2. Then technically what we have to do, we have to figure out what T is and then find a new matrix of T. But the nice thing is we don't have to because now we have this change of coordinates formula. So, recall, we have this really cool formula that says to calculate the new matrix of T, you take the old matrix of T and just conjugate it by what's called a change of coordinates matrix. So like QT pi, so QT, Q inverse, where Q is the change of coordinates matrix from beta to gamma. And the way you do this, you take the old vectors in beta and evaluate it with respect to the new coordinates. So it's 1, 2 with respect to the new coordinates and minus 2, 1 with respect to the new coordinates. But because we have the standard basis, this is not hard to do. Because 1, 2, it's 1 times 1, 0, plus 2 times 0, 1. So it just becomes 1, 2. And the new coefficients here are minus 2, comma, 1. So our answer then is, it's just 1, 2, minus 2, comma, 1, times this matrix, 1, 0, 0, minus 1, times the inverse of 1 minus 2, 2, comma, 1 inverse. And I would like to remind you the inverse of A, B, C, D. It's 1 over A, D minus B, C. D, A minus B minus C. Recurring theme that the lights go off. And if you do that, the determinant is 1 times 1 minus 2 times negative 2, which becomes 5. So this is 1 minus 2. 2, 1, 1, 0, 0, minus 1, 1 over 5, and then you flip it, 1, 1, and you uh, put minuses, so 2 minus 2. And if you calculate that product, 
you get the following very strange answer. You want to see this? Good, good. Um, what you get at the end is, for some reason, minus three fifths, uh, four fifths, four fifths, and then three fifths. And that gives us a matrix of T with respect to the new basis. And here's the nice thing. If you have the standard basis, then it's actually easy to figure out what T is. Namely, T of x, y is just A, this matrix times x, y. So minus 3 fifths, 4 fifths, 4 fifths, 3 fifths times x, y. And again, this only works with the standard basis. So this is what's cool about it. And we get basically minus 3 fifths x plus 4 fifths y, and then 4 fifths x plus 3 fifths y. What this is telling us then, the formula of t, you know, the formula of the reflection of uh, points across y equals 2x is minus 3 fifths x plus 4 fifths y, and then 4 fifths x plus 3 fifths y. And yeah, whoa, how cool is that? And of course, there are other ways of getting this with geometry or something, but I think this is super elegant. At no point, I, mean, I feel linear algebra is a math of laziness because at no point did we do any complicated calculation. We just said, well, we know t at those two easy vectors, and then we just use this beautiful change of coordinates matrix formula, and then we get our beautiful formula. And um, that's why also sometimes linear algebra is called linear geometry. And I would just like to mention, if you have the line y equals mx, everything stays the same, except you just replace 2 with m. So in other words, your points here then are m, sorry, uh, uh, 1 comma m. And then if you want a minus m comma 1. And then if you want your formula then becomes, let's see, I have it here. So uh, let me check. So 1 minus m squared over 1 plus m squared times x plus, let's see, uh, 2m over 1 plus m squared y. And da, 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 I have to go back there. So 2m and then m squared minus 1. So 2m, m squared minus 1. So 2m over 1 plus m squared x. And m squared minus 1 over 1 plus m squared y. And of course, you may also ask, what about n under like lines not going through the origin, like let's say y equals to mx plus p, then I haven't, I haven't found a formula, but technically you can't really use linear algebra because you know it's not a subspace, so it doesn't go through zero, but not a problem at all. If you have a point here, let's say x comma y, just translate everything down. So in other words, translate this down by p units, to the x comma y minus p, then this new line is y equals to mx, then find the formula of t with this x y minus p, and at the end just add p to um, add p to y. So my guess is it's just uh, the same formula but with y plus p instead of y. All right, I hope you like this reflection extravaganza. Next time I'll do projections, of course. And if you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.